Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 23 of the April Lico Daily Challenge. Almost there toward the end. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's prompt. Count binary substrings. Uh, I usually solve these live, so it's a little bit slow. Let me know. Uh, or fast forward or watch on 2x or whatever you need. Um, back to classes today. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So given a string s, find the number of non-empty substring that has the same number of zeros and ones. Okay. Um, okay. Hmm. So what does that mean, right? So I think this is actually. Uh, I think I actually. I, I have seen this problem recently, and by recently, I just mean like in the past two or three years, and I think. I struggled a lot. I remember the last time I did it, I struggled a lot with uh, trying to do some sort of fancy prefix sum. But the key observation on this problem was noting that, you know, instead of just zeros and ones, and I think I, th I think that was the thing that was a little bit tricky for me uh, doing it the first time was the zeros and ones. Because I think if I had A's and B's, it would have made it way more clear. Um, and... And I don't know, I think the zero and ones, because uh, mathematically, I just kind of, I don't know, tied it in my head in a way that I was trying to figure out, like, okay, you know, given a length of, I don't know, uh, five, uh, well, five is an odd number, so maybe not, but six, right? You try to find three ones and three zeros. Um, and that means that the, the prefix sum is three. Well, it seems like that that actually is not the way to go, um, but that's the way that I was going the wrong way last time, I believe. Um, I think it was a... A couple of years ago now, but yeah, but the, the the and as I was saying, if the characters were A's and B's, then it actually makes it a lot easier because then you don't have this confusion about trying to sum them up. The answer is just you have to match A's and B's. Um, so the first intuition that you might have is around sliding window, um, because you know you, you sliding window, but that's gonna, you know, in this case, sliding windows only work. Um. If or like it may work in n squared time of time because you don't know the length, right? Because for here, for a given, um, uh, maybe not the string, but but actually for in this case, right? Uh, let's say you have a string that looks something like this. Um, you know, ending at a certain point. Let's just say you know that we want to end this here, uh, between this one and this zero. Um, th this is this is a possible answer, this is a possible answer, and this is a possible answer, and so forth, right? There's, so there are multiple answers, so that makes it a little bit tougher to do sliding windows, because then you may have to do a sliding windows of each length or something like that, um, and then that's going to end up being n square, and n being 50,000, that's not fast enough. So the the thing that this is actually ends up being is just, it ends up being... Um, uh, prefix some dynamic programming if you want to call it that but basically the idea is that okay you convert all the zeros you convert zeros to negative one and then one to to i guess positive one and then here that means that now you can look at this as an array of you know negative one plus one negative one plus one dot 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 and then you now do a prefix sum on that so then you have negative one, zero, negative one, zero, dot, dot, dot. And, and, then at a, and then at any given point, you're trying to figure out this. And this is, you know, just a, a common application of the prefix sum, though that is or the prefix dynamic programming, which is um, a little bit harder to say. But basically, okay, with a prefix sum, uh, you know, let's take another one. Because because this is too oscillating, so it, I want to make it a little bit irregular. So let's say you have this prefix sum, or you have this thing, and then the prefix sum with this mapping, uh, it's going to be negative one, negative two, negative one, zero, negative uh, one, negative two, uh, negative one, zero, right? And so basically, what the prefix sum, uh, and let's have a prefix zero that has no elements. Um, so the prefix sum is what it sounds like. It's just the prefix sum from the first element to the 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 kth element, right? Whatever it may be. Um, and then now you're trying to figure out, okay, 
you try to figure out, okay, for example, this negative one, well, you're trying to figure out some other substring such that, um, okay, so let's say this is uh, mm, total, uh, let's just say this is sum from, from eh, I don't know how to notate it, from zero to k, and this is, um, you know, and we want to figure out, you know, we want this thing to be zero, right? Um, so then we, this is sum of, I don't know, some other, just say i to k, right? Um, and here you can see that, you know, we want, we want the sum of i to k is equal to zero. Uh, we're looking for, for the number of times this happened. And, and you can kind of, you know, if you look at these prefix sums, then this is just this minus this, right? And this is, of course, sum of zero to i, say, right? So, yeah, so this is, we're looking for this. We're looking for this. Um, and we're given, and we know that this is the case, right? Sum of i, k uh, is equal to sum of, uh, Wait, but no, no, sorry, my fault. Zero i is equal to this thing, right? And this is just like the segment subtraction. Hopefully, this makes sense. And we we know that we're looking for this is equal to zero, uh, so that's our target. So then now, if you put this on the other side, then that means that given this number zero, and this is you know this is what we have now as we loop through the array, we're looking for a condition where this is true. Right by adding sum of sub i from each side, um, so that's basically the idea. Uh, maybe this is a little bit sketchy, and maybe I could go into it a little bit more. Uh, but I'm a little bit tired. I'm not gonna lie. So I apologize for that. But hopefully the code as I go through it will make sense, and you know we'll make sense a bit together. Uh, but yeah. But basically, so now we just have a frequency. Um, you know, so now we keep track of of how many times we've seen certain numbers so then we can do the math later so this is just a frequency map and we're going to use a frequency counter this is actually the same thing that we did yesterday with break was uh at least up to this point and then now we also want to set f of zero is equal to one to denote the beginning of the array where there are no elements so then now we do for okay let's just say um hmm, i call it rowing but Rowing sum is equal to zero, and then now we do for c if, since c is a character. If c is equal to zero, rowing sum we minus one, uh, else rowing sum plus one, right? And then now we we oh yeah we have a let's just say total count is equal to zero, and then total count is equal to as we say, um, you know. We're looking for this number, which is this number right now. So that means that we're going to look for, oops, we want to add it. Uh, rowing sum, and then we're going to add f of rowing sum increment by 1 because now we want to, uh, after we process looking for this, we want to add this segment into um, what we have previously seen. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully. Let's get the other one. Ooh, wrong answer though. I thought there was one more. Then this place. No, it's this one. Oh, huh. where did this come from? Hmm. Well, it was still the wrong answer, but maybe I'm off by one somewhere. Huh. Ten, huh? Hmm. Maybe I don't need this. Maybe that's why. Still wrong though. Okay. Hmm. So let's keep it first. Negative one. Maybe. Huh. That's odd. Okay. Let, let's take a quick look at the inputs. Did I misread this problem? 
Oh, well, okay. I solved a different problem again because I'm, I am silly. Because this one now is a lot easier. Because you, the, the zeros and ones have to group consecutively. Okay, so, I, so okay. <sighs> Apologies again as I solved a different problem, but it is still interesting to solve that, that, this problem. And so this is this should be correct for that problem, but uh, but this is not the problem with this problem. So hopefully you learned something. But then now let's solve this problem, right? Um, okay. So using the same idea we have here, um, we just have to change the statement a little bit. Instead of kind of looking up for this, we just want to look up. Okay. We want to look up. Hmm. How do we want to do? I just want to double check that. Okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think this is actually a lot easier. <laughs> it's just that I did it in a funky way. Um, but basically, the idea now is, I think, greedy. You, you look at the adjacent zeros and the adjacent ones because they have to be grouped consecutively, and then you take the min of those two, and then you just add the min of those two because, um, let's say. Uh, now I feel a little dumb solving this other problem, but that's okay. We we're learning as well. Uh, but and that is another problem though. So I think I just kind of mixed them up. But let's say you have something like this. Um, you look at two adjacent groups of zeros and ones. And be, and here you know that the and we take the min of these two because you know that there's there's two of them because there's zero ones and then two and then you kind of keep on going right. So then it is just going to go and it goes only as last as the min of those two. So yeah. So, okay, so let's, yeah, um, well, 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 okay, so yeah, let's look at, hmm, how do I want to implement this? Uh, I'm going to just use, hmm, I, so for those Python masters, you can probably use group by, and on a contest, I would probably just end up using a group by. But, uh, but I guess I'll, I'll, for here, for sake, I'm just going to do it uh, in a more brute force kind of way. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments how you did it with goodbye. But uh, but yeah, so current, um, yeah, is equal to zero. Um, let's just say n is equal to length of s. Uh, yeah. So maybe current is one. And then we start at, yeah. So index is equal to in range of from one to n, and if s of index is not equal to s of index minus one, then oh, I think I have to do more than that. Okay. Mm, how do I want to do it? Uh, I think we just count the number of things and then we just push them in their way and then we do it in a dumb way. So let's do it that way instead of trying to be too clever and trying to do it in one pass. I'm just going to do something like this where uh, I just say groups and then and then now we can do for um, actually I guess it's the same so yeah for index in range of 1 of n if and, and current is equal to 1 for the first element if uh, s of index is not equal to s of index minus minus one and let me do a quick check it'll be at least one length okay so I don't have to worry about zero length like I did yesterday by accident um, okay so then here if they're not equal then group start append current and then we set current is equal to one otherwise current we just increment by one and I think that should be okay do I do the last number yeah I, have to add, I think I have to add the last number so yeah so then let's just print it out real quick. So this should be two two one and two 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 and then one 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 one. So then now we just have to look go loop through the the uh, the groups to the two adjacent groups uh, in size. So I'm just gonna do something like this. And then total we just take the min of x y and then return total and we're good. We should be Gucci. If not, I'm going to be a little bit sad. 
But yeah, so now this looks good. Um, again, this is a little bit greedy, but yeah, let's give it a submit. Hopefully this is good. Yep, uh, and what is the complexity here? Well, we look at, here we look at each digit at, 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 um, at most once. Um, and yeah, and here again, you know, at most we're gonna look at one. So it's gonna be linear time in a number of things. Uh, I actually did this with linear space because I made this groups array uh, so that we can keep track of this this part easier. It is a little bit clearer because th that means that now you can test each of these two components independently of each other, uh, which if you have you know errors and stuff like that, this is makes it easier to test and fix. However, um, this is linear space um, because groups can have you know one item per per character if they're all zero once and. Uh, alternating, right? Um, however, you can actually do this in all of one space by just, you know, in here, you just keep track of the last two and then and then do it uh, in one loop and do it live. Um, if, if you want to practice up solving it, meaning solving this afterwards and, you know, improving the running time, you should definitely try to do that. But I'm just going to tell you that this code is O of N or linear space, but you can get this in O of one space or constant space. Uh, that's all I have for this problem. I solved two problems again, so bonus solution for you, hopefully, maybe. Uh, but yeah, I misread the problem. I don't know. Uh, that's all I have, though, for today. Uh, I'm using this Apple mic, so hopefully the sound is good. Or not good, but at least it's working. So yeah, I'll see y'all later. See you tomorrow. T take care of yourself. Stay good. Stay healthy. To good mental health. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.